Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Josh's Car Corner. Today you find me at Arizona Dino Chip in Tempe, Arizona, where after about four and a half years since it's been built, I am finally going to find out just how much power the engine makes in the GTO. Um, you will have to excuse the perspiration if you see it on my shirt. It is really hot today. It's 110 degrees right now. It's not the ideal conditions to be doing this in, but unfortunately it is what I have to do. And the thing I know about most dynos is they will adjust for the uh, air temperatures and humidity levels and give you an idea of what your car would really be doing at ideal air temperature. So it really shouldn't matter today that it's this hot. It's got over 40,000 miles on this build. Not a thing has gone wrong with it. Haven't lost a spring, lifter, push rod, no knocking issues, no ticking issues, nothing. It's just been reliable. And I know it's not the most powerful LS engine ever built, far from it but I also know that it's very reliable and it's done everything I've wanted it to do, which is still be really good on the street, but make more power than the average uh, LS2 that's just from the factory. I've got my hopes and expectations in mind and hopefully I'll hit them, but if I don't, well, maybe it'll inspire me to dig into this motor again and do something else. But before we get it strapped down the dyno and we actually find out what it's doing, let's go back through everything that's been done to the motor so I can give you an absolute detailed description of everything that's been done so you can understand what this engine build is all about. To begin with, the car has a stock LS2 bottom end. The only upgrade there is a set of ARP connecting rod bolts. The heads are the factory 243 heads, but they have been ported and polished with a three angle valve job. The valve retainers and the valve seats are all factory GM. The springs are PAC 1219 X springs. The rockers are stock, but they have had the comp cams trunning upgrade. Push rods are Manton push rods, 1130 seconds diameter, which is bigger than the quarter inch or 516s that most places sell. The lifters are standard LS7 lifters. The cam is a special cut from Comp Cam. It's their XE High Lift series, but with a special duration and everything that I set up. The duration is 220. 224 intake and exhaust at 50 thousandths lift. Lift is 563 intake, 568 exhaust with a 114 load separation angle and no intake advance. The intake manifold is the factory LS2 intake manifold, but it has been port matched to the head. The throttle body is also a factory LS2 throttle body, but it has been ported and polished and there is a very ram power wedge in between. There's a due speed intake feeding it air from the front. For fueling, we have fast 46 pound fuel injectors and the car also has an alcohol sensor. And today the car is running on Arizona ethanol, which is about 55% ethanol content. So now that you know everything that's going on inside the motor, we'll strap it on the dyno and see what this thing actually does. We're working on strapping the car down right now. That's Keith right there, he owns the shop. And it's an outdoor dyno, which I've seen him on trailers before, but never outdoors. Then we check everything right there when it's done. And it is double quadruple strap down there. Not sure if it's necessary. I don't think I'll make that much power, but we'll see. So that's it. It's a 3,000 pound four foot wheel. So let's say it's going 40 miles an hour. Now you make it go 41. Well, you've done X amount of work to do that on 3,000 pounds of the two foot radius. Now how fast you do that, so that's torque. How fast you do that, that's horsepower. Got it. And is it two separate drums? Nope. It's got oh. a six inch shaft that goes in between a, on four like dinner plate sized bearings. Okay. Yeah. Cool. When we get the fourth gear, we're gonna hold it steady at 2000 RPM, not accelerating or decelerating, just hanging out. At that point, I'm gonna say, Josh, are you ready? You're gonna say, yes, Keith, I am ready. I'm gonna press the screen button to start our data stream. I'm gonna check it, make sure it's working. Once I know it's working, I'm gonna say go. Please wait for me to say go. When I say go, nail it, stay in it. Bring okay. it up to your desired RPM limit. Lift off the gas, put it in neutral, go for a coast. I have the I have the brakes. I've got river car brakes working on this. If we get a brake contest and I win, I flat spot your tires. If you win, you snap the straps and hit the big fan. I will provide you with a box and a mop for your convenience. Limit my liability to the box and use the mop. Remember, if it feels weird, it is weird. Okay? Yep. So yep. go ahead and light it up. Okay. Turn your traction control off. So if it feels weird, just go ahead and lift. If I'm waving okay. at you, I'm not cheering you on, go ahead and lift, okay? Okay, we will do. One, two, three, four. All right, here we go.
like we might have cleaned off the tires on that one. We've got a little bit of a swale here. Okay. Probably spun. So okay. We've got our tires clean. Uh, we're ready to go. Looks like it's uh, a little on the chubby side down here, but just a little bit. Could le be leaned out just a tad. I did bring HP tuners along. I could lean it out a little bit. Okay. If, uh, let's get a, let's get another one. Okay. Where we fill in this blank. Okay. And then we can go from there. Ready? Ready. Go. Sounds good. So, all right. So, go go de go down to what forty five hundred and yeah. Do you think you think that? Well, it moved it right at four. It didn't really move it at forty eight, did it? Yeah, it just stayed where that was before, and Even then it, you changed it at forty eight, right? Yeah, and then it went lean from there on. Go, go, or, a, cell, go a cell lower and, and move the whole thing up. By okay. Just a. This day and this engine and this build is good for 419.4 horsepower and, and 400 torque. And this is at, I mean, but look at, I mean, it is correcting for the air temps, but. 113 degrees. Yep. I mean, yes, it corrects for the air temps, but it doesn't correct what the car does. Right. Okay, so the car reacts differently. Right. I mean, and it's, a, it's an SAE factor, not an SAE number like they do on a Boeing engine or something like that. So right. we, you know, if a Lawn Boy and a Kenworth all respond the same, which I'm sure they don't, yep. then this works perfectly, which yep. I'm sure it doesn't. Exactly. Okay, so final numbers. Final numbers. I think that's what it's going to do. So now you got a chance to see how the car did on the dyno that day. But what I bet you're wondering is how the car did compared to when I did a dyno run five years ago with my all bolt-on setup. Well, I'm not going to make you guess. How the car did I'm gonna actually show you right now so let me just bring this up here so what you're looking at right now is the dyno sheet from when I did the run five years ago when the car was all bolt-ons and there's a couple things I want to focus on here the first thing I want to focus on is from 3,000 rpm to about 5800 the wheel torque is always at or above 350 foot-pounds this is what makes LS engines so great is they have this nice flat torque curve and you just ride this wave of torque throughout the entire RPM range and that's what makes you have good acceleration all over the place no matter what RPM you're running and having good torque up high is also what contributes to having good horsepower. 
So now I want to show you the dyno sheet from that day, just a couple weeks ago. So the thing to pay attention to here is that same number, 350 wheel torque. But look where it starts now. Now you get 350 wheel torque starting around 2600 RPM, and that carries all the way over to about 6250 RPM. So you're talking about 36, 3700 RPM where you have over 350 wheel torque. Now the overall max torque isn't that much higher. If we go back to the original sheet, peak torque back then was about 391. And today peak torque is only 400. So it's only gone up nine pound feet of torque, but the difference is where you have it. So peak torque back then was about 4,800 RPM there, thereabouts. Now peak torque happens more around 5,000 RPM. And what is significant is how long we have that high amount of torque. So like I said, 350 pound feet of torque all the way up to about 6,250 RPM. Whereas before, 6,200 RPM before was about 320 wheel torque. Now it's 350. That explains why we have 30 more wheel horsepower than we did before. The more torque you have at high RPM, the more horsepower you're overall going to make. This applies mostly to a two valve naturally aspirated V8 engine. Now engines where you have a crazy amount of dual overhead cams and high airflow and really high RPM especially, you can compensate for not having as much torque and still get a ton of horsepower because when volumetric efficiency is good, when you have an engine that can rev 8,000, 9,000 RPM and still flow air, you can overcome a lack of torque and make really good horsepower. But when you're talking about a big pig iron American V8, two valve per cylinder, especially when it's naturally aspirated, you need a lot of torque up high to make a lot of horsepower. So, and What's great about the, this build, and hopefully you understand now why I built the engine the way I did, is because that torque band is so wide. Like I said, almost 37, 3800 RPM, where torque is above 350 wheel torque. So it just means no matter where you are in the RPM range, you've always got excellent torque. Now, I can't really get any more torque out of this build. If I were to go with a bigger cam, all I would end up doing really is moving peak torque up. So right now it's about 5,000 RPM. I could probably move it around the 54, 5,500 RPM range. And because peak torque is higher up there, I will make more horsepower up top. But in order to accomplish that, I'll be sacrificing so much on the low end because if you look at the graph, and I'm gonna go back to it here, you gotta notice, um, your horsepower at about 2,500 RPM is low. It's 175 wheel horse. And that peak torque is starting about 350. And if, if, if I were to start the runs at about 2,000 RPM, you'd probably see that peak torque is down about 300 or there or thereabouts. When you put a bigger cam in, you're basically shifting that whole graph over in the RPM range. So you can move peak torque up but then your driving around torque is gonna to be that much lower and that's gonna make the car more of a dog to drive around on the street. So if you have a car that you wanna drive on the street and you wanna enjoy on a daily basis, you don't necessarily want a gigantic cam in your engine making peak power up in an RPM range or on the street, you're never gonna use it. So this is one of the things you have to pay attention to when you're building your engine. How do you wanna drive your car? Do you wanna drive it every day? Do you just want a track monster? those kind of decisions go into what kind of a cam you can put into your engine. Because you can put a big cam in a completely stock motor with a stock intake, stock heads, whatever, or you can go to the extreme, get massive flowing heads, a fast intake, all that good stuff, forced induction, and you can go with a small cam and still have a really balanced package that may not be as peaky up top, but it's very, very good on the street. And that's the build that I went with. And hopefully you understand that now, and it gives you a little bit of insight if you ever wanna build your own engine someday as to the way direction you might wanna go when making your choices. So I hope you enjoyed this little part, and um, let's go ahead and finish this episode off. So now I know what the car makes, and it's 420 horsepower, roughly 419, and 400 torque, which it might be, a, I'm a little disappointed, but in the grand scheme of things, I'm not, because 
I didn't build this engine to be an all-out top-end monster. I designed that cam specifically because I wanted it to still be good on the street, and it is great on the street. And when you look at the curves for horsepower and torque, it's not wild, it doesn't shoot to the moon, it's still got that nice bottom-end torque that you want for driving around. So, all in all, I'm happy. Will it encourage me to do something else with the motor? I don't know, who knows what. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a whole nother motor. Uh, maybe I'll do more mods to this motor, who knows. But it's got over 40,000 miles on this build. Nothing's ever gone wrong with it. I know what it makes. It's not impressive, but it's respectable. And, and I like knowing that it's still a good balanced overall setup. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And you know, if you still haven't done anything to your car, maybe this will finally inspire you to do something to your car. So thanks for watching to this point. And uh, it is 113 degrees out here, so I am gonna get out of this heat. So once again, thank you for watching Josh's Car Corner and we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the show. If you like the show, let me know by clicking that subscribe button. And you can always follow what's going on with the show on Instagram at Josh's Car Corner.